Thank you for the breath of life. Make me alive. My spirit is alive unto you. My heart is alive in love with you that you place within my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory to your name, O King. Glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The one who is worthy of it all. You did it all. Went all the way to Calvary. You paid the price. Your blood was shed. They may have forgiveness. That I may be restored to my Father. Thank you. You did it all. You did it all. Thank you. So may the praises arise from a thankful heart this morning. Hearts full of gratitude. Hearts full of love to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Worthy is His name. Worthy is our Lord God. Our Savior, Redeemer, our High Priest. Worthy. Come, come, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our midst. We welcome you in this place. Take the praise. Sanctify it. That it may be something pleasing to you. Out of the depth of our heart, in truth may we pray, in truth may we declare how great, how good is our God who reigns and rules for everything. We praise you. We want to know you more. We want our hearts to run hard after you. Reveal Jesus. The Holy Spirit, reveal him this morning to every heart. Those that are here and those that are abroad, Lord, re reveal so Be welcome in our midst. Blessed one, holy one, glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Light of the world, light of my heart, light of my life, glorify. Be welcome, blessed King. May the praise arise from a thankful heart. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers here. And I want to publicly uh, thank the Lord for the life of my father, uh, that he bless him and keep him. And like Richard said, we want to honor our spiritual father. And this morning, I want to be a good son. I want to make him feel proud. I want to open my heart and lift up my hands and bless him. Because he deserves all the glory and all the honor. And that is what I want to do this morning. And if y'all will join me in blessing his name. Of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless your name this morning, God, as we do every day, but in this day of remembrance, as our Father, we bless your name. 
thank you, Lord, for loving me, keeping me, shining your face upon me, Lord. Thank you, Father, and I'm proud to, call, to be called your son. Amen. Lord, you are so great, and I'm so tiny. Lord, fill my mouth so that the praises reach the heavens, Lord. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. Sometimes my life doesn't reflect that, Lord, but I want to bless your name this morning. With everything I touch, with everything I say, I bless your name. You are a good father. You give me good gifts when I don't deserve it, Lord. Amen. My Yahweh, my Father, you are great, Lord. Thank you. Of the glory, yes, and the honor. So we lift our hands in worship. We lift your holy name, cause you are great, and your miracles so great, and there's no one else like you, amen, there's no one else like you, there's no one else like you, for you are great.
able to worship Because it is written, in him we live. And we move. And we have our very existence. So he gives me life so that I might worship him. He gives me the ability to move not only here on earth but into his world and have our existence not only in this world but in his world because we belong to his world and he is our loving Father. Yesterday, and in the majority of nations, we celebrate Father's Day. But for many of us that have lost our fathers, God has stepped in and has said, I am the father of orphans. So, I got a better father than you do. How about you? Wow. He stepped in. Sorry, Al. God steps in. And I'll take that trade. It's hard, yes. But what a wonderful father. You have Peachy, right? He is our loving father. Today... As we celebrate Father's Day today, God gave a great gift. And Jesus was the one who brought it. A special gift for fathers. But first, I'd like to sing this song. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the King the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And what a better subject today than the Father's Prayer. Musicians, thank you. You're free to go. What a better subject than the Father's Prayer. You might say, John, it's the Lord's Prayer. I don't think so. In Matthew 20, uh, chapter 5, it says that Jesus, in verse 1, called his disciples and went up into a mountain. There were 82 of them, 12 disciples and 70 of the other followers called disciples and later apostles. The Eastern Orthodox says there were 72. All men, not only the 12, but the 70 that are mentioned in Luke 10, not only were married, but many, if not most of them, were married and probably fathers too. We know Peter and many of the 12 disciples were married, but we don't have a mention of the names of the children, if they had them. How blessed we are and you are if your father is God. And how blessed you are if your earthly father is a son of the heavenly father. You are truly doubly blessed. And so this prayer is the prayer given to those whose father is God. Those are the sons of God. It's not the prayer of the devil's seed that are evil already because their father is the devil. It's not their prayer. And there are so many subjects and lessons to be learned in this prayer. But I'd like to focus on one part that's so important for fathers. So Jesus gave the men the gift of this prayer for the fathers. Because he told them, when you go into your closet, here, use this prayer. And the part I want to focus on is the part that said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not. Take us not. This phrase has been... So misunderstood. Lead us as if God takes us, makes us be tempted. Takes us into this situation. Leads us there. Tricks us. Takes us to where we don't want to go. And yet, it is clearly written that God tempts no man. James 1.13 makes it very clear. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. This phrase, what it literally means when you look at the Greek, the wording and even the Hebraism of that time, it clearly does not mean he takes us or leads us, but it means he allows us. He permits us. So to read it correctly, it should say, do not suffer or permit us to be tempted. What a prayer. Father, don't let me, don't permit me, don't suffer me 
to be tempted. And this is implied that God has such control over the tempter. Even over our own being and character from which so much temptation does come. But he has so much control that he can. That's why the prayer, don't allow me to be tempted. So it means he can not allow. It's in his control. Don't permit me. Don't allow me to go into temptation. Again, the word is clear. It means a sore trial. It comes from the Greek that means to be pierced by a spear. And it's used in, in Greek literature so many times to be pierced, to be tempted, not killed, but to be hurt, to be pierced, to be wounded. So I said, Father, do not allow me to be afflicted, to be tried, because that's what it says, sore trial. Please don't let me be tried. I know I'll probably fail you. I'm a coward. I don't have much faith. I can't get to go through what others go through. Please. Don't allow me to be trialed. Or afflicted. And it's not wrong. To ask this. That's why Jesus said this is the prayer you should pray. It's not wrong to pray that we might be saved from suffering if it be the will of God. Jesus himself asked in the garden, if it's possible, don't allow me to go through this trial, to suffer, to drink this cup, let it pass from me. In fact, in many of the writings of the church fathers, they understood it in this way, so much so that they added these words. Lead us not into temptations which we cannot bear. Interesting, the concept. Lead me not into temptation which I will not be able to bear, they added. But understanding they had of, of, of what Jesus in that prayer what was behind that, lead us not. Why we don't want to be led there, led there. Because we don't think we can bear it. And that word temptation to be pierced not only implies the violent assaults of our enemy, the devil with a spear. But it also implies afflicting circumstances. Things, circumstances that pierce us, pierce us, hurt us, try us. And why do we always want to ask God to keep us, to not allow it to happen? Because normally he, how does it go? He who flees the battle lives to fight another time. I'm not a coward. I'm just keeping myself for the next one. And we all have a cowardly part. We wish to avoid suffering. And we'd rather avoid battle if possible just in case we lose. We fail. If not, if we were sure that we're going to make it through with flying colors and get a nice medal, hey, we might say, hey, well... Maybe. Because we don't think many times we're strong enough to resist, to fight, and to overcome. Or we think 
that we don't have the grace or the fortitude or the spirituality sufficient to bear what you must to go through the trial of life. That's why God doesn't ask us first. He has never asked me, never consulted. Does he consult with you? Huh, I wonder why. No, the prayer says, it's like you're always already in it and you're asking, oh, don't take me there, please. But if God allows that trial, that piercing, it means that he knows that we will make it through. Because he'll make sure of that. It's written by Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation. Again, the same word. There, is no, there has no temptation taken you such as is common for man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able but will, with the temptation, also way, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. How many of you have been in situations, I have, that there was no way out? Everything just looked so gloom, so terrible, so impossible. When you're in the midst of that piercing and all your hope, your balloon, your faith, just deflated. I can, I can handle this. I, I can't. And yet God knows what we're able. He's not out to destroy us. So the word then is to be tempted. Pirosmos is all included. Trials. Adversity. The trials of a man's fidelity, faithfulness, to try our integrity, our virtue, our constancy, to allow the enticement of sin, of evil, of temptation, to see if we will resist. In these days, months, year, or more, have been days of great temptations for the whole world. As evil roams the street seeking whom to be devoured. And you know, whenever things are going wrong, never try to drown it with alcohol. Never. You don't want to be drunk. Peter's saying this in 1 Peter 5 8. You need to be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. So you have to be sober or he'll devour you. You'll just be staggering down the road and you can't run away. That's my version. Seeking whom to infiltrate, whom to contaminate. Try to destroy the good that remains on earth and replace it with evil. This last year, as you all know, has wrecked havoc on people's minds, souls, and even bodies. They couldn't handle what happened to them. They couldn't handle, handle the change in the world, in their daily life. Since the last of 2019, adolescent suicide attempts were over 50% in the last year and a half. Especially of adolescent girls. Signs of depression have tripled 
here in the United States in COVID, since COVID came. And the depression symptoms have gone up 38% in adults from 18 to 39. Children have been taken to emergency visits related to mental health. Now when you go to a doctor here, it's been that way, well, 2020, 21, I went to do a lab test, normal, do every year. And they come out with this form, this questionnaire, has nothing to do. What are you here for? What? Do my yearly lab test. Okay, well, we have to answer these questions first. Do you feel depressed? Do you have thoughts of suicide? What's this? I want to you take my blood. What else do you want? Well, no, no. Now, we, by law, we have to ask all these questions. Oh, do you feel depressed? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel sad? Do you feel... Without strength, you want to just lie down. Oh, yeah, that's me. I would like to rest. No, no, I don't mean that. All these questions, because all this is happening. Do you have motivation? Suicidal thoughts. So God has allowed the whole world, including his children, to be tempted, to be tried. Tried by Satan, but using even our own weaknesses. Because inside of us, there resides, there lives in our nature, waiting to attack us every moment, evil. Inside of our mouth. I'm not talking about what James said about the tongue, but literally inside of our mouth. At any given time, there's over 6 million bacteria, viruses, bugs, germs actually. With more than 700 different species and types of germs, viruses. That provoke some of them serious diseases, pneumonia, all sorts of diseases. They're all there. Most of them are suppressed by our immune system, but sometimes one of those germs, viruses gets to be Superman, gets fortified, breaks through the immune system, and we get sick. Don't you think that's allowed by God that counts every hair that falls from our head? Do you think he does not see or know or led or open the door for that virus to get supercharged? How did it suddenly get super? In our mouth. My father used to think and say. That he believed that viruses. That have no life in themselves. When they get fortified. It's the result of evil. The devil or demon or whatever. That comes in and gives us strength. To overcome. Gives strength to those viruses and germs. To do us harm. So the Father's prayer says, don't allow evil to empower my weakness. Do not allow that my weakness, that, that I struggle to keep it at bay, to keep that vicious dog chained up inside. Don't empower don't allow the devil to empower that dog within to break the chain. Come out. Please. I know. 
I've got all these viruses inside. But please don't allow. Don't allow what's inside of me to get empowered because I got mad. Empowered because of disillusion. Empowered because of this. Empowered because of that. James says in James 1.14. says every man is tempted. Again tried. When he is drawn away by his own lust. By the same thing that's inside of us. And when it conceives it entices us, and when it's conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin brings forth death. So a man may be tempted without entering into temptation. Entering into a temptation implies our will giving in to that empowerment. Embracing it, allowing it. We should never embrace even those weaknesses within us. They are our enemies. They're going to all die, don't worry. Along with our body, they'll be gone. We're not going to take them with us to heaven. Never give in. Fight to the last moment of your breath. Never surrender. Always fight. Jesus was allowed to be tempted. And he was. And he fought. And he endured in the desert. He said, but the Lord says, but it is written. He didn't embrace the siren call of the devil. But why would God even allow his children to be tempted. Why not keep us from it? Wouldn't it be easy just to, it says, he giveth up the victory. Why? Why not keep us from evil? Because of the great, great blessings that come with the temptation that comes with the prick that comes with the trials because like we say here no pain no gain no battle no victory no victory no spoils no victory no blessings see if he said okay I'll just give you all the blessings and we say, hey, wait a minute here. This is discrimination. Evil lives matter. No, no, no. He says, okay. But I want to bless them. So they got to fight. So they can get spoils. That's why Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 7. That the trial, the temptation, the trial of your faith. Being much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried in fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man, James said, 112. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Again, trials. Blessed is he. For when he's tried... He's going to receive a crown of life. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Yes. Why did God allow? Is he sitting there and saying, let's see. What, what piece of gold do I want to give to my children? Ah, I'm going to wreck his life for a week. I'm going to wreck his life for a month. It's going to all be good in the end. No, no, sometimes. Sometimes. He is fulfilling in his justice the request of one of his creatures that he created before he created us. Someone that was very special in heaven. 
the light of heaven. It's called Lucifer, the star. It seems that once in a while, he comes around and makes requests. In Luke chapter 22 and 31, Jesus said, you know, Satan was around there in one of his visits. He made a request. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Oh, my goodness. I mean, they tell me this. I'm going to start quaking and wetting my pants. Oh, no. What's going to happen? No, I, I just rather God does it like he does. It just comes. He doesn't ask me. He doesn't tell me. He doesn't forewarn me. Suddenly, boom, it happened. Because if he told me, if I knew, I would suffer a million deaths. Hmm. Satan has desired to have you. That he might sift you as wheat. But here we go. Jesus is there to make sure. That even though he can have you for a while. To make sure you're going to make it. He said but I have prayed. You know I've been in many situations where. I practically have given up and not had any more strength. I just said, okay. I can't go one more step. And suddenly, something happened. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody lifted up the dark cloud. And faith was there. The sun began to shine. Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, yes, you're going to think it's all gone. And he did. He went out crying and sobbing when he denied the one that he followed and loved. But then, but then, but then. Jesus wasn't going to give up on Peter. No, not the one that he called. I'll pray for you. I'm going to pray. And yes, the devil asked to do this, but I'm going to ask my father another request. Don't let his faith fail. And it seemed like almost it was gone. And then it was turned from darkness to light. Thank God that Jesus is at the right hand of the father and has not forgotten us. Thank God that he's still there interceding because it's written, interceding for us before the throne of grace. And if, he, if he's involved, I think I just might make it. What do you think? If he gets involved, says, hey, and look what's happening to this, uh, my beloved. Uh, Father, I think you better step in. And Jesus said, everything I ask, the Father gives me. So I think I'll make it. I think that he that has begun the good work will make it all turn out okay. And they'll live happily ever after until the next one. Yes. And so he was delivered. There was another man, a father, a great father, an honored father. His wife, his children. And one day, Satan came and said, hey, God, I have a request. Sure, you bless this father. Of course, his name is Job. You bless this father. Nobody can touch him. But if you let me touch him. And God led. God allowed. Allowed. He always allows. So we must understand. 
everything that happens in our life is allowed by God. Just get that into our heads and hearts. No, the devil cannot do anything to God's children. If it's not allowed. And if it's allowed, it because God sees the way out. Knows how it's going to end. And knows that we're going to say, thank you God. I'd never be where I am now. If it weren't that you allowed this in my life to happen. This pain, this trial, this circumstance, this sickness. This trial. So Satan desired to have this great father. Job. And God allowed Job to be tried. But he was delivered from that temptation. And he was delivered from that trial. And he was greatly blessed. And became an example to all the righteous future fathers of the world. And his life has blessed. Suffering countless thousands of people throughout history. Who have read his story and been comforted. And yes, if it's possible, if it's possible, let it not happen. If God would have said, look, I got this situation here, Job. I got this problem, you know. You know, Lucifer has been around today and he said, I'm thinking, no, 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 God, do not think of it. No, it just happened. And yet... If he does not allow us to be tried, he won't be able to deliver us either. Deliver us. Another interesting Greek word. You know what it means? It means like what Reagan said. Gorbachev, take down this wall. You know what it means? Break our Chains. It's a very expressive word. Loose our bands. Snatch us out. Pluck us out from evil. Why? Because that's something we can do. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Release our change. Set us free from this trial. That's in the same prayer. If it be possible. Don't let it happen. But if it does. You'll have to deliver us. There's no way. I'm going to get out of these chains by myself. We cannot break our chains. So. If. We pray so many times in our lives. Lead me not into temptation. Fathers, I know many times you face situations and inside in your heart says, oh no God, oh no, don't let it happen, don't let it happen. I don't want to lose my job, I don't want to lose this, I don't want this to happen in my family, I don't want this, oh Lord, God, 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 please don't let it happen, don't let it happen. But so many times when it happens... Fathers forget to say, deliver me. They keep trying to pull the chains and see if it comes off the wall. And maybe if there's a, a, a nut that's loose, and there is a nut that's loose up here. If you don't pray, deliver me. Because that's part of the Father's prayer. So if we're going to pray, I don't like the situation. Then you got to learn to pray, God, deliver me. Deliver me out of this feeling. Deliver me out of this emotion. Deliver me out of this depression. Deliver me. Because I can't deliver myself. So learn to pray. So many times. I'm a father. I'm a man. I'm a macho. I've got to tough it out. No, you don't have to tough it out. Squeal. What wheel is the one that gets the grease? 
the squeaky wheel. Exactly. So if you can tough it out, you don't need any help. Well, okay, this situation is going to go on a little time longer until you realize, oh, God, have mercy, deliver me. I can't do anything. Learn that lesson. We never can do anything. Yes, but well, my wife will think I'm weak. Who cares? I want to get out of here. I'll make up my macho image later. <laughs> I'll erase all the pictures from her phone. And put another picture, muscle man. <laughs> yeah. If we pray, don't let me go into this. We must learn to pray. God, deliver us. Lead us not into temptation, but if it's not there, if it's not possible, deliver me from evil. When trials come, the Father's prayer to our Heavenly Father must be always help me. Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Jesus, wash me. Don't let this inner evil, resident evil, come up and hurt me or hurt others. Help me, Jesus. Deliver me from evil. So let God arise when you ask him. And let his enemies be scattered. I don't want to wallow in self-pity. I don't want to wallow in sadness. I don't want to stay in unbelief and depression and say, no, oh, how long is this going to happen in my life? Let the end result of the temptation and trial and prick, let the end result be victory. That's what God wants. He's never desired to destroy you. Look at Job. He was given twice what he ever had. Blessed in his, the rest of his life and made a blessing for the rest of history, his life. So let the end result of every trial be what God wants it to be, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Victory in my life. Victory in my marriage, victory in my children, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Hallelujah.